So Darl, how do you feel about watching violence in television series and films? Generally I'm okay with it. Um, I would watch some things that have have violence in them. Uh, I guess you could say I'm probably desensitized to it, but um, I don't really have any kind of ethical issue with watching things of that nature. Have you ever felt influenced by violence in television series and films? To commit violent acts, you mean? Yeah, like a repeat of what you see, or no? I think I think you would have to already be a bit unhinged to do that. Um, this is an old debate: Do television and film contribute to violence? Um, I don't. I don't personally think so. Um, I'm reminded of actually something that happened in literature, which was Stephen King. One of his early books was called Rage, and it was all about a school shooting. And it was told from a sympathetic point of view of the shooter. And there was a real school shooting that happened, and the police found a copy of Stephen King's book in the student's locker. So Stephen King then said, that's it, that's that book off the market. Um, but I think there had to have already been a pre-existing condition in that person because you also have to look what about the millions of people who've read the book and haven't gone into schools and start searching people you know so it the the real fault lies with the individual with the mind of the person who's watching the thing i think the actual media is secondary to the problem you know and i think you know if anything art has a responsibility to reflect life realistically so if you say we're not going to allow violence in art well then what you're saying is um, we're going to take an aspect of reality and paint it wrongly you know we're going to say life is different than it really is and if anything I think the sort of violence that you see in old TV programs like the A-Team from the 80s where bullets were always flying everywhere where cars were always racing down city streets at high speed but nobody ever gets killed. That's an unrealistic kind of violence, although people generally feel that's more palatable, but that's not life, that's, that's fantasy. So you're basically saying, Here, here's what life is, but that's not what it is. So you're telling fibs to kids who watch these programs. So which is worse, a realistic and very, uh, you know, disturbing portrayal of violence that's designed to be disturbing in film, or, this more uh, sanitized violence that isn't real, which causes more problems, you know? What do you think uh, should be done for the individual that is influenced by that type of material? Uh, just men mental help, really, psychiatric help. Uh, unfortunately, the, thing that it, the, thing, the question is, would it have happened if he hadn't watched the movie or whatever, or read the particular book? Would it have happened? Um, who knows? But I think a person like that is always a ticking time bomb, regardless of what he sees. And you just have to hope that people like that are noticed early enough and can get the kind of help that they need early enough. Um, but there's, these things are always going to happen because balance is a part of life. How would you feel if a member of your family or friends committed an act of violence from a film or television series? I would be very surprised. Um, I, don't, I don't know what I would do. I would just be, I would just be shocked. Because um, I like to hope that, <laughs> that all of my friends are, are mentally well, you know? Um, I just would want to know what on earth happened, what happened. Would I, would I immediately, you know, I wouldn't immediately go, oh, shouldn't have watched that darn program, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, an infantile reaction to that, you know, whatever was going on with that person is much more deep-seated than just what they watched on TV. I have watched a lot of violent movies, played a lot of violent video games, and yeah, you know, I'll admit, particularly in the area of video games, there's a tendency to, to get angry at times when you're playing something and it's not working and anger builds up on you and you have what they call game rage but it's still it's still controlled you know it's just it's more uh, like frustration that you're 
that you're going through, but in no way would playing one of those sandbox games where you're running around and you can do whatever you want to whoever, no way would that influence me to actually get on my motorcycle and start riding around crazily through the town and, you know, running people down or whatever. Talk about like Grand Theft Auto then? Yeah, games, games like that, Just Cause, Grand Theft Auto or whatever. Um, but when you're in that fantasy environment of the game, in the privacy of your own home, sometimes you will <laughs> let a few expletives out of you that you wouldn't normally say in everyday life. And normal people can separate fantasy from reality in that way, you know? And it's just, I guess, the, uh, the abnormal ones you gotta watch out for. Would you still remain in contact with someone that done that there? I don't know. Possibly not. Depending on the severity of what it was? Yeah. Right. Depends sense. whether, uh, if it was motivated purely by um, something that was wrong with them, wrong with their brain, then I would have compassion for that. But if it was motivated like a revenge killing or like a crime of passion, somebody slept with somebody's wife and then the other person went out and killed them or something like that, then I have a lot less uh, compassion for that because, you know, that's premeditated and criminal. How do you think that people can make this type of intelligence series and films? And what do you think anything that would make them tick, you know, to want to go out and do it? Do you think they really want to be like that person or they probably think that's the right way to go about it? Like a role model? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is literally the first time I've kind of thought, of, thought about that question, but I suppose it's possible that you know when you glamorize the anti-hero or the the sort of you such know, as Walter White. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good example. I mean, uh, and I work in the education system, you know. Uh, every lots of people, you know, loved Breaking Bad. I love Breaking Bad, and uh, but it's pretty clear that Walter White is not the good guy, really. You can sympathize with him because you can understand the psychological process that he went through and the choices he made to an extent, but he does gradually get worse and worse and worse as a human being and by the last season his actions really are indefensible in any way. I certainly would, don't idolize him as any kind of hero, but because you've, you've gone through everything with him, uh, you can't help but have See. some kind of sympathy for the, the journey he's gone on. And uh, that's an interesting thing actually in, in film and television when you take somebody who is criminal and instead of just painting them in these black and white terms, he's evil, the other person's good, you've got you know this mixture going on which humanizes a criminal person, turns them into somebody that you've got some measure of respect for. A good example, another good example is The Shield I don't know if you've ever watched the Shield TV series, it was all about corrupt police officers. But you couldn't help sort of being on their side because you just knew them so well, you know? And I think that actually reflects the fact that, to an extent, we're all a bit of a mixture of good and evil inside ourselves. So that's Rick Grimes? Yeah, yeah. I like Rick a lot, actually. Rick, Rick represents the, uh, from Walking Dead, he represents, uh, the ability to adapt, you know, you would be, he's the lawman in an ordinary society, but when society falls apart, he's a survivor, he adapts, he changes his behavior. He essentially has to kill, to kill people, something he would never have done before. We don't kill the living. You'll die. You'll all Shut up. I just kill people in cold blood because it was the only way for him and his group to survive at times. So I, I can understand that, I can respect that. And you know the walking the walking dead is really good because it's like it's that sort of this is even though it's got something nuts like zombies in it, which can't possibly be real, it's still telling a story about 
humanness, about, about humanity, about what you might have to do if your circumstances were different. And it's valid and it has to be for that reason because that's the story it's telling. So that's why I think it's one of the best TV shows in recent years. Do you think there should be more or less violence than what there already is now, considering the fact there are people that are meant to be ill out there? Um, well, that's to consider the fact that there are people who are mentally ill and then to tailor your art to avoid any, the potential of something bad happening that you don't know whether it will or won't happen. You can't, you can't really make your art subservient to that. I like the fact that violence can be portrayed realistically in today's media. I like that. I think it's done badly at times. There are some movies that are just purely gratuitous for the for the sake of being as disgusting as they can possibly be. I don't have a lot of time for that. But if there's a real story to be told and the story is violent in nature and the director is savvy enough to actually portray it realistically, that has total respect. And I don't think we should be sanitizing things.